Gang, I am very excited to announce that my new merch range, the Trap Bear range, just launched over on traplaw.com. This is a limited edition design which will only be available for two weeks, baby. And for the first week only, you can get 10% off with the promo code LOWBEAR10. I'm sure you can guess that this design is taking some inspiration from an iconic design of the past. So I decided to celebrate the release of this design by taking a look at one of the most interesting fashion stories in hip hop history. And it's all about that brand that has one of the longest run running associations with hip hop history, Ralph Lauren. So kick back, fasten up the top button of your polo shirt and grab the stick because we're about to jump on horseback and score whatever kind of points you score when you're playing polo. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about polo, Ralph Lauren. Hip hop's relationship with the Ralph Lauren brand goes all the way back to the 1980s. For example, some of the earliest hip hop artists like Grand Pooba had been making preppy brands like Polo, Ralph Lauren, and Tommy Hilfiger cool before you'd have even heard of them. And as we all know, when something's popping in the rap game, the fashion in the streets does not lag far behind. And so in New York City in the 1980s, two street gangs emerged that were famous for stealing high-end fashion items from department stores like Macy's and Saks Fifth Avenue. These two gangs were Ralphie's Kids from St. John's and Utica in Crown Heights and Polo USA. The USA, of course, standing for the United Shoplifters Association hailing from Marcus Garvey Village in Brownsville. And so in 1988, these swag-snatching squadrons joined forces and united under one banner, the Low Lifes, baby. A crack team of fashionable misfits who together would be an unstoppable force in thieving designer clobber. Now, tracing back the original founder of this group has been a contentious issue over the years, despite what this yelling man would have you think. <laughs> Regardless of who specifically founded each of those groups originally, you can't deny that the most prominent co-founders responsible for bringing together this ragtag gang of misfits are Rack Lowe and Thurston Howe III, with these two generally being considered the true pioneers of pilfered polo. But I know there's going to be some people watching this wondering why? Why? Why bother stealing all of this Ralph Lauren clothing? Well, actually, Rack Lowe explained in an Oi Polloi interview that the attraction went far beyond a desire for the high quality and colourful designs that polo had become famous for but that the appeal was specifically in the fact that these clothes were not designed for these poor urban kids living on the rough sides of Brooklyn. In fact, Thurston Howe III himself even described wearing polo in a 2018 Complex interview as pure escapism. Wearing the clothes was a way for us to forget about where we were at and what we were dealing with. The man didn't want you to wear fly polo garms if you were from Brooklyn, so you know what they did in Brooklyn? They stole that low and wore it head to toe. In fact, if you are one of the low lifes to truly be living your best life, you want to be low down, which means wearing nothing but polo clothing from head to toe. A practice which is still sacred to this day for some of the biggest names in the rap game, including two chains. Polo draws, polo socks. Man, come on, man. This is not, I didn't know I was doing this interview today. I didn't know I was doing this interview. Where my low lives at? Come on, baby. Where my low lives at? Ah, oh, low lives. Anyway, right. As they explained in the amazing documentary, Bury Me With My Low On, which you can find on Dazed's YouTube channel, it's very much worth watching. When the low lives went out in the streets of New York wearing their fresh polo garms, it transformed the way that people treated them. We love the reaction from the people on the train, the girls, the girls go crazy. They see all these dudes fly at one time, everybody. But of course, how did these crews get their hands on all of this fly Ralph? Well, they'd just bloody well take it, wouldn't they? Through activity, the low lifes describe as boosting or racking. And there's an important distinction to make between these two techniques. Boosting, as immortalized in numerous Jay-Z lyrics, refers to those just stealing for money, according to original co-founder Rack Low, with boosters often selling these reclaimed luxury garments back to the hood at knockdown prices, like some sort of Robin Hood of discount drip. You know what, screw it. Next time my gram wants to go to the Ralph Lauren outlet, I'm taking her down to the one in Brownsville, baby. But in contrast to boosting, the act of racking is stealing for sport or pure necessity. With this culture of stealing the materials that this crew needed to survive in these streets, grandfathered in from the graffiti culture, which saw outlaw street artists regularly racking spray paint for their trackside arts and crafts. But whether you're stealing for polo sport or polo leisure, one must wonder how the hell these guys got away with it for all of those years. Well, of course, the most iconic method of swiping polo garments was a technique known as rushing, where a giant mob of low-life goons would quite literally rush into a department store like Macy's all at once, grabbing armfuls of Ralph Lauren as much as they could possibly
solidly hold and then running out of the store. Rack Lowe actually called this the most dangerous method in the low life's arsenal, a strategy which had left many low life members in jail and Rack Lowe himself on Rikers Island. And sure, the cops and security might catch a few low lives in the skirmish, but with so many goons mobbing so deep all at once, there would always be a decent proportion of members that would get away with that coveted bag. In fact, Rack Lowe even recounted in a Fader interview, nearly getting caught by security whilst taking part in a 50 man rush where he tried to run out of the store with a goddamn mannequin. But the crew, of course, had more sophisticated means than rushing. For example, before ink based security tags that would ruin clothes if taken off, Rack Lowe's crew would attempt to covertly remove security tags from items in the Ralph Lauren store, and some even crafted their own aluminium shopping bags that would allow them to steal bundles of security tagged items without setting off the alarms. Or if that's not devious enough for you, one of the most absurd methods apparently saw lowlife stooping to wearing women's girdles, which they would stuff polo clothes into and tighten up so they wouldn't bulge out and they could walk out of the store with them undetected. Lowlives are out here looking like Marge Simpson robbing the candy convention. Of course, once the authorities and retailers got smart to these techniques, the only thing that would really work would be rushing. This of course spawned the idea of the mythical million man rush, an enormous unstoppable wave of sticky fingered lowlifes descending on polo outlets like some kind of tsunami of swag. And let's not forget of course that the mythical million man rush was immortalized forever on lowlife co-founder Thurston Howe the third song of the same name. It was the million man rush, I was there! And you know what, while I'm on some straight up old head shit, there are numerous other classic boom bap bangers that tribute to the low lives double L love and loyalty mantra. Of course I'm talking about the iconic track two L's up which of course works perfectly as my own personal mantra because I take L's to the face all the fucking time. Now the low lives have never stopped appreciating fine polo garments. It's been a long held tradition for them all to meet up in the middle of Manhattan's Times Square to show off their coveted polo treasure. And for years they've held annual barbecues and meetups to keep the community spirit of those that love rocking low alive. However, as Racklow stated in the fader from around 2006, you no longer had to steal to be a part of the low life culture. And thankfully Racklow turned his back on the life of crime and theft after seeing so many of his friends end up in prison or even worse. Because as we saw in that dazed documentary, low lives on the mean streets of Brooklyn flexing their swaggy designer clothes would only become targets for the bigger and more dangerous boosters. On the train you'll get robbed, polo goose you could get murdered, Times they run up and jump out of cars with guns and everything just to come stick niggas up for the polo. But it's worth saying for the record that law abiding citizens were always welcome into the low life clique. In fact, Rack Low told Complex that even back then, around 25% of their members were honest Joes working nine to fives, just hanging out with the crew to show off their legitimately gotten Ralph Lauren garms. So over the years, the wild young men that had racked and boosted polo grew up and matured. We saw Thurston Howe being interviewed by GQ in 2015, looking like a polo park ranger, making it clear that the low life movement is no longer about stealing or having a negative effect on your community. It's now a culture about shared love and loyalty and the cultural connection that low life rockin' hustlers share. But fortunately, the influence of the low lives on the hip hop culture and pop culture in general continued in the years that followed. Of course, Nas was known to like a bit of polo sport back in the day. The Wu Tang clan were known to be low aficionados. Of course, with Raekwon the chef famously rocking the iconic snow beach jacket in the Can It Be So Simple music video, setting the trend for this mythical and rare piece of Ralph Lauren to be coveted by so many rappers that have come since him. Whether it's the original founder Thurston Howe rocking the snow beach, or new school lyricist Smoke Dizza rocking it, hell even pop sensation Chris Brown wore one in a performance on the Today Show. And another rapper who definitely deserves some credit for their low credentials is loyal action Bronson consigliere Mayhem Lauren, who has a huge collection of low. Of course huge in both number of pieces that he owns and the ridiculously large big and tall sizes I assume he must wear. And of course he's got one of his own snow beach jackets too. As well as a fly ass polo bear knit which is not dissimilar from this one your boy TLR owns. Swaggy! Action Bronson himself is also known to be a bit of a low head, having also been referenced in the Thurston Howe book, photographed by Tom Gould, bury me with my low on, and posting it on his Instagram. But of course one of the most famous low heads in recent pop culture is of course Kanye West. Notorious for his pink polo which apparently he single handedly brought back into fashion. And of course there's his famous it ain't Ralph though, a line which he blurted out when discussing how big he wanted his Yeezy fashion line to be during an interview with answer lacking radio host Sway Calloway. Uh, it, it ain't, ain't Ralph level. level. Rack Lowe said that what he felt the low lives achieved was taking this predominantly white focused high end fashion brand and reappropriate it for the young, 
urban Hispanic and black youth of the inner cities. They made the polo brand their own. They weren't supposed to be wearing it, but they loved it and they loved the way it made them feel and they didn't let anyone stop them from getting fly. And it was this crew of dedicated clothes thieves that made Ralph Lauren the staple in urban street culture in a way that nobody had ever intended. Hell, if you're really reaching hard, you might even call the low lives the original culture vultures. I prefer the term culture soldiers. But really though, Ratclough says himself that the same way that the Jewish Ralph Lipschitz changed his name to Lorraine and reappropriated the preppy, waspy fashion staples for his own brand, the Low Lives created their own brand and their own reality through the clothing they wore. And even in 2015, the Low Lives released their own capsule collection of original items inspired by the coveted vintage pieces of Ralph Lauren that Lowheads had collected and fought for over the years. In some ways, it's kind of ironic that Ralph Lauren became a symbol of success in the hoods of Brooklyn. I mean, think about it this way, stealing expensive clothes that you wouldn't normally be able to afford so that you can wear them in your area and get treated better than you usually would. In some ways, the low lives almost invented the fake it till you make it culture that is so prevalent in hip hop today. The low lives made it so that you were what you wore, not where you came from. And the same thing's happening nowadays. Every rapper wants you to know how rich they are. They want you to know they're wearing a Miri denim. They want you to know they're rocking a Patek Philippe and they want you to know they're driving a Lambo. Skr -skr. And it was the low lives that paved the way for hustlers world worldwide to use fashion as the gold standard of I am a baller. And so as the influence of the low lives spread throughout hip hop, it also spread around the world. And we've begun to see international chapters of the low lives emerge. From the Japanese low lives, the universal low lives repping big in Australia, or of course, jolly old England, where the Racklow approved official chapter of the low lives in London operates. Basically Racklow gave us the name, the London Ralph Lauren chapter. And these London low lovers were immortalized forever in the entertaining, if slightly excruciating documentary entry low down in London, which hilariously told the story of some of the most successful polo dealers in London, or at least that's what they'd like you to believe. I sent a lot, a lot of love, I had so much, I couldn't even contain it all, I had to sell that shit. I made enough money to buy myself a little boat out here. Unfortunately, this film ended in tragedy, as the London Lowlifes planned a 2011 meetup which crashed and failed spectacularly when only one person turned up. That seems to be the only person that's turned up out of about 25 people. Shout out to Miles McAuliffe for making that film. It's a classic, go check it out. And so despite the fact the London low lives aren't going so strong, there's one UK low life who's still repping that brand heavy, me. Like I said at the start of the video, I've just dropped my new merch range, which is slightly inspired by one of the most mythical items in the low life lore, the endless bear knit. A supposed merch mindfuck that's a polo bear wearing a shirt that depicts another polo bear wearing another shirt depicting another polo bear and so on forever. Ever. This is an item which supposedly doesn't exist as Mayhem Loren made clear in a Vice interview. Well, that bear wearing shirt might not exist, but at least for a limited time, you can now cop my bear design, which depicts a rare rainbow headed Ross rocking the very first merch shirt I ever made. It's fire, baby. Shout out to Chung Fame, the winner of my last Instagram design competition for designing this for me. So if you want to support the channel and go and cop one of those, it would really mean a lot to me. Head on down to traplaw.com or click on the merch shelf below to go and get one of those. Bear in mind, this is a limited edition tee, which will only be available for two weeks and for the first week you can get 10% off by using the promo code LOWBEAR10 but act quick baby because they are going to be gone in two weeks this is a limited edition deal I'm on some supreme shit it's going to be fire come on baby I haven't even got mine yet I've ordered it hopefully I'll have it and I'll be able to record a little extra bit after this video so that I can show it off but I'm gassed to be wearing my bear tee and I hope you are too gang so any excuse to celebrate the low lifes and I hope you enjoyed learning about a little bit of classic hip hop history that is definitely dear to my heart thanks so much for watching and peace out oh my god gang look what just came in the post jesus come on come on guys look at that we're booming we're bunking baby got them trap bears on deck it's lit it's lit and look at that your boy got the one with a small bear on the front you got the small bear on the front it's fire and then the big bear on the back on some palace shit you know that's you know that's fire baby you know how we do so if you want to go and get one of these head on over to traplaw.com or use the merch shelf below these will only be available for the next two weeks and for the next week only you can get 10 percent off by using the promo code lowbear10 why pay full price when you can get 10 percent off if you get it in the next week i don't know why you wouldn't do that i just i whatever man appreciate everybody that has bought a shirt from me in the past appreciate everybody that goes on to cop one of these if you do cop one hit me up on instagram send me a picture of you wearing it send me a picture of you ordering it whatever i will show love i always try and respond to everything i get on instagram i respond to as many as i can I, as it just takes time you know what i mean if i don't get around to you straight away just give me a little bit of time i'll get to you but yeah go and cop one of these i'm super excited i'm super gassed i can't wait to be wearing this all over town rocking it 
doing my thing. You get me. So thank you so much, everybody, for supporting. I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon gang, gang, whose names you can see on screen right now. And don't forget, the next video that I'll be uploading is a Patreon special, The Rise of XXX Tentacion, which was chosen specifically by the patrons. And we're going to be doing a Patreon chosen story every single month, guys. So at the end of that video, I will be doing a special song for any of the people that are supporting on Patreon. And from then on, I won't be doing the name readings at the end of every episode. I'll just be doing a song with all of the names of the Patreons every single month in the Patreon selected story. It's going to be lit. It's going to be special, baby. So until that video, this is the last time I'm going to shout out the patrons at the end of a video in non-song form. So you enjoy it while it's here, baby. So I want to give a huge shout out to the patrons. That's Abraham Perez, Alex Knight, Alien Evasion, Ban Johnson, Basically a Bush, Bash the Prince, Black Lives Matter, Fuck the Police, 5021, Brandon Wedlow, Chase Hedrick, Chosen One, Chris, Chris J, Claire Audion, Deshaun Campbell, Dreezy Draco, Duquan Jones, Dylan Gordon, Eddie Aguila, Eric Prince Nysamore, Eric Fredrickson, Frank Forsiglia, Griffin Fuller, Hakeem Onye Dikachi, Shodimu, Harry Vagina, yeah, said it, Henry Bryant, Jay Superior, Jaden Cho, Jameson Felipe, Jason Wyman, Javier Gonzalez, Jay, Jessica Simmons, Kizzlebot, Lord Bale, M. Clay, Mark Vader, Matthew Kendrick, Mathis Martin, Matt Kitchen, Max Hathaway 2000, Niraj Shukla, Nomad Quinn, Otaku VS, Pamela Vigil, Penis Bag, Muck Penis Face, yeah, I said it, Rowan Hughes, Ryder, Sean Anderson, Senjagara, Shazza from the South, Shua Glenn, Sim Hutchings, Tammy Whittington, Trauma Hound, Tuxedo Mask, Vampires for Hire, Von Snoogle, Vivi, Wilson Psychedelic, and all of the other names you see on screen. Thank you so much. Your support means the world to me, and I'm so excited to have li I've literally just recorded that X video for you guys, and I'm gonna do that so I'll probably write and record the song tomorrow. I'm gassed, I can't wait to show it to you, gang. Appreciate you, appreciate the support. Go on, Copper T, they're fire, please. I'd, I'd, I'd really appreciate it, guys. Traplaw.com, Low Bear 10, appreciate you. Peace.